The skin is composed of the epidermis, dermis and subcutaneous layer. It supports a number of specialized structures primarily associated with sensation, protection and the maintenance of homeostasis. The epidermis is composed of epithelial tissue adapted for high turnover of cells. Apart from the keratinocytes, the principal cells of the epidermis, it also contains Langerhans cells, melanocytes and Merkel cells. The dermis is composed of connective tissue, it is much thicker than the epidermis and highly vascular. It contains hair follicles, sweat and oil glands. It houses specialized sensory structures, free nerve endings and corpuscles of touch and pressure. Principal functions of the skin include cutaneous sensation, protection from external environment, thermoregulation, a reservoir for blood, excretion and vitamin D synthesis. Both hair and nails are considered as skin appendages. The control mechanism influencing the behavior of the skin primarily involve the sympathetic part of the autonomic nervous system and the endocrine system. The health and integrity of the skin is dependent on many external and internal factors. It is an important element to consider in any clinical diagnosis, providing clues on the health status of the patient far beyond primary or local skin pathology. Many systemic conditions do, at some stage, manifest as alterations to skin appearance and integrity. There are three scenarios which you must bear in mind when dealing with the skin. Firstly, a patient may present with an isolated local skin lesion, for instance the fungal infection of tinea pedis. Secondly, a patient may present with a primary skin lesion, as in the above example, but with a more systemic etiology, as in a diabetic patient. And thirdly, a patient may present with a complaint other than a skin problem, but the clinician may find evidence of skin manifestations, providing supporting evidence in the differential diagnosis. For instance, a patient presenting with joint pains and fever with a malar rash suggesting systemic lupus erythematosus. Therefore, when dealing with a patient complaining of a skin problem, even if it appears to be a localized lesion, always consider wider implications. Conversely, look at the patient's skin when inquiring into or examining non-skin related conditions. When taking a case history from a patient, you must use simple, clear, everyday terms. After you have examined the patient, when summarizing and writing up your findings, you must use appropriate medical terminology. This is important, as it is possible that you will need to discuss or share your clinical findings with other colleagues. Please refer to the slideshow for the most commonly used dermatological terms. When taking a dermatological case history, bear in mind the following questions and considerations. Is it a single lesion, multiple or more widespread? Has the location of the lesion always been the same or has it migrated over time? Is the patient's condition affected by seasonal change or the weather? Is the color of the lesion the same as the adjacent skin? Is it hyper or hypopigmented? Is it red, blue or yellow? Does it have constant or changeable characteristics, including color, shape, size, texture, temperature, hydration, smell and sensitivity? If the lesion is painful, ascertain the intensity, characteristics and constancy of the pain. Are there any aggravating or relieving factors? Is the lesion confined to particular parts of the patient's body, on one side, on exposed or covered areas, or is it completely random? If pruritus is present, does it affect just the lesion, or is it more widespread? Is the lesion within the skin, is it raised or palpable? Are there any changes to hair or nails? 
Is the patient prone to bruising? Is the affected area or the whole patient sensitive to sunlight, heat, cold or wind? Is there any history of atopy? Have they had any similar skin problems in the past? If so, how did they develop, progress or resolve? Investigate external environmental factors, including occupational, recreational and domestic, for example, the use of detergents and personal hygiene methods. Do they come into contact with animals or irritant plants? Do they come into contact with similarly affected individuals, such as members of the family and work colleagues? Have they experienced any recent coincident changes in their overall health? Seek for signs and symptoms associated with systemic conditions. Has the patient related their skin condition to particular foods, drinks, medications, cosmetics or activities? Are there any changes to the vascularity of the affected region? In female patients, ask if there are any associations with their menstrual cycle. Does the patient display any symptoms of a systemic condition, such as fever, malaise, general aches and pains, or unintentional weight loss? Has the patient or another clinician attempted to treat this condition? What was their approach and what was the outcome? Red flags relating to skin manifestations include For pigmented lesions, use the mnemonic A, B, C, D, E. Asymmetry, border irregularity, color variation, diameter exceeding 6 mm, and elevation and enlargement. The Glasgow 7-point checklist is also useful for malignant suspect lesions. The major criteria are change in size, change in shape, and change in color. The minor criteria are diameter greater than 6 mm, inflammation, oozing or bleeding, and mild itch or altered sensation. In addition, consider serious systemic pathologies which may manifest as skin conditions. Further details are found in the slideshow.